got skills now i think you all might be aware how skills are being important and especially when you look to the state of nagaland where we have shortage of skilled manpower and as the theme of pm shri school we have to catch them early because everybody is skilled but they are not properly oriented in those skills because as a uh, nagas everyone is good at basket making but they are good at bamboo work they could at different artisan work but we have never thought in that way that we can make career out of it or we can go and make our livelihood out of it so that's why we have i think we have introduced uh, roughly around 8 to 9 courses ranging from electronics beauty wellness healthcare it uh, we have uh, automobile also given the need of vehicles uh, nagaland has a higher number of vehicles so these small courses are introduced as a foundational courses you may not get a job but these are for your foundational courses to show you a path a alternative path apart from your academic course and nep 2020 has integrated the skilling and academics together so now we will not see skill as a separate element skill is integrated with your academics it's a part of your schooling now so that is we are in a transition and eventually this transition when we adopt the nep 2020 fully this transition will have a larger effect in especially with the academics with the schooling and especially these marks which you see they will be integrated into the credits and now i think uh, we have till class 10 but eventually when you go for your higher studies many of you might opt for class 11 12 or there are variety of options we have ITIs we have different training institute so you can carry these marks as credits and in your future you can redeem these credits so once i think we are expecting by 2027 or 28 that nep 2020 will be fully adopted uh, that's the mandate for state of nagaland and for the mandate of entire nation so once we adopt these things will turn out like so these are the like overview of what we feel about skilling now talking about what the ministry of skill development is doing so uh, recently uh, the minister has launched a skill loan so those who want to pursue skilling after class 10 or after class 12 uh, the earlier the loan was 15000 but it is now increased to 7 lakhs up to 7 lakhs so those who want to pursue their profession in say iti or want to upgrade their skills in a better institutes we have institutes like uh, major institutes coming up in major cities where the major focus is given in the industry 4.0 and the new age technology so if you want to pursue your career if you want to those who are and it's it's not a gender specific because uh, initially when we i remember when uh, we introduced this beauty wellness and electronics or automobile in the school they used to always uh, teacher or principal used to say like there's a huge bias like girls want to go to beauty and all but we tried to change it because we know there are a lot of beauticians male beauticians also there and women are also coming into technical field so that domain that that we are breaking it to the skilling and now many schools we see it's not bias we have mixed gender technical schools so you have a better option now to avail these loans and you can go ahead and take pursue your future in the skilling path another i think one thing we couldn't do like connection to the skilling or industrial skilling so many of you go to class 11 12 or after that you pursue plain ba or graduate something but there is very less transition towards ips very less transition to the skilling courses 
uh, when I say skilling courses, because your courses are level one, level two, level three, but when you go outside, they are like for example, we have Nagaland Tool. They will offer you level four, level five courses, which will make you job ready for the industry. So I think you need to explore the, those kind of options, and I'm sure your vocational teachers, they will be uh, doing your internship, you will be exposed to this. Academics is required, no doubt. Within the campus, we all understand that we learn. But if you go to advanced economies, if you go to Japan, if you go to other countries, you see in skill congresses that the first boy and the first girl, they are much more conscious in skill than anybody else. But in our country, unfortunately, it's the other way around. So the change in the curriculum is going to have create havoc in the arena of employment. Because please understand this jargon that catch them young. I will give you an example. Say for example, uh, people who know and hear love music will understand that a boy or a girl starts inculcating this habit from a very young age. That is music. Similarly painting, similarly other form of art. If that is the thing, then this also, we should start from a very tender age to basically excel in that particular area. Now the thing is, uh, we started this catch them young jargon because there were many people who are into this vocational education and formal education, but the bridge between what we are doing and what is wanted out in the field or in the industry, this linkage has to be done. See, this is what Mr. Praveen has rightfully said. This program can create havoc for the school if they are taken in the right spirit. Similarly, it can create havoc for the student also if taken in the right spirit. Why I am telling? We are up late. I was discussing, we are working with UNICEF. UNICEF has a program which is applicable in whole of Southeast Asia whereby they teach how to give an interview, financial literacy, and other allied activities. Now, we are imparting this education to all the colleges and students of schools aged from 14 to 29 years. Now, the thing is, this is basically a 10-hour course which actually introduces people to financial literacy. Now, this kind of ventures where people learn out of box, that is, I want and I want to learn and I learn how to make an LED bulb means what? Means if I have this knowledge backed by financial literacy, I can be an entrepreneur. Our population in India is more than 130 crores. The job sector can provide jobs to certain people, but we, we require entrepreneurs. We require people who can employ others. So in order to build entrepreneurs, we wanted to catch them young. And now the next stage of this training will be, should be rather, that we back them up with financial literacy. It's not only entrepreneurship, it's not only manufacturing things, it's also how to do a business. The objective of this is, if I want to do a job, it's just like an on-the-job training, it's just like an OGT. If I want to be an entrepreneur, this is my first introduction to skill, whereby back with financial literacy, I can do it. And from the school side, this can be what Mr. Praveen has rightfully said, this can be a hub, manufacturing and earning. So it can help in your cash flow also. So it's a win-win situation for all of us. Now, the thing is, the challenge is uh, not basically introducing this. The challenge is how we take them to the next stage. Because initially, after learning this, what is next? My actual dream, is to start solar projects also. But the thing is that thinking of the cost and others, we also have our limitations. I am indebted to this entire team of Nagaland because Nungshi's idea of starting it out of the box and backed by the entire team actually has killed this result. So now the thing is that a little bit of support, a little bit of assistance or involvement. Support means actually involvement. If this involvement is seen, then my next plan is to initiate solar paneling 
which is actually, see these are, we have been working with UNDP for green vehicles in South. The thing is, the ultimate next stage where we are going to basically see this world or our country as a whole is green vehicles, solar energy, okay. So whatever energy saving devices are there, these productions will go up. So my option or my entire thing is dream is basically to get into this relevant products of green vehicle, LED lamp, solar paneling, solar systems. So what happens that in a state of Nagaland, we can harness this potential which nature has given us. We are basically generating electricity, we are doing n number of things. Now the Prime Minister has also told that you can have a panel on your rooftop and sell the excess electricity to the grid. So what happens, every household becomes a productive unit. So we'll have to think which Japan has thought years before. We are trying this uh, idea, we are trying to implement this idea because if we can do it, we can, we have the backing of a huge population and the huge population where the average age is on the lower side. The difference between Japan, Germany and us is their population is on the advanced level, our population is on the lower side. So we have a huge human resource waiting for us for proper skilling. And if we can devote our time, energy and a little bit of perseverance your patience and a little bit of involvement for the government and other sectors, I think we can create a work.